fans of a Horus heresy, shoulder-mounted heavy weaponry, and models from an earlier age. Thank you very much for joining me for a retro unboxing video. So what do I mean by that? Well, as many of you know, I've been working on a word bearer's army for some time. Well, it's largely been done for the last two years. However, I've been gaming a bit recently. I've decided to finish one of the units that I'd planned to add to it, but never had. And the models for that, I thought I would share because it's probably amongst the last of its kind. And it's Space Marines. Everyone loves a Space Marine. Almost. So what we're going to do today is take a look at these long lost models or models from beyond. And it's in the form of the Legion Mark IV Heavy Weapon Squad and the accompanying Legion Last Cannon set. So these models date back to the early years of the Horus Heresy. It's the development of the Badab range of miniatures from 2011, I think, 2010, 2011, that Forgeal did. And they did a Legion version, which added some studs. And for many years, these Resian infantry were the only option for doing heavy weapon and similar squads in the Horus Heresy, certainly without having a massive collection of bits. They were nice models, though resin, which is not to everyone's taste. And also, they are expensive. You know, you're probably looking at around three and a half times to four times the cost of the plastic models that are now available. But nonetheless, they're cool models. And I thought I would just share this as there's probably not many of these left now. So I thought we could take a little trip down memory lane. Obviously this packaging dates these a bit. I think I bought these from someone who sold them to me back in 2018-ish, maybe 2019. I'm not sure what year it's from, but yes, it's a while ago now. And what you get in this pack are five resin Mark IV Marines, and they are designed to take shoulder-mounted heavy weapons. You also get the plastic 32mm bases, and the 32mm bases also dates the pack as well. So when the Heresy originally came out, Marines were still supplied with 25mm bases. We're also going to take a look at this, which is the Legion's Last Cannon set. And this is a pack of five resin last cannons that are in the shoulder-mounted configuration and compatible with the infantry set. So that's what we're going to do. What I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the pack. I'm going to show you the models. We're going to have a little sort of a reminisce over them, appraise the quality, and just generally see what it's about. So as these are going to be word bearers, I thought I would promote my scalpel to an honorary anatheme for the purpose of today's videos. And like Erebus, slicing open a hole in reality, we shall open up the portal into the resin goodness. Obviously, unlike Erebus, there was a, a lot less evil and dark gods involved here, probably. These were originally supplied, I think, as boil in the bag models, where they threw all the parts into a bag. Then, if these were being sold today, you would get these in a, one of those small Forge World white boxes. So, first, the 532mm bases, I mean, nothing exciting there. Good design though, I like these. Uh, these are the more modern design which don't have any injection feed dimple in the top. I do like them. Right, so let's start with some torsos. So you can see straight away these are, these are fairly dated because of this casting key. The design on this changed a number of years ago. But yeah, there you go. The classic Mark IV torso design. Ooh, we've got a cheeky eagle. I'll need to remove that. Can't be having any eagles on word bearers. These are nicely cast. These are kind of from the era when Forge World was still a bit squiffy on its mold quality or molding consistency. And I think that was mainly because they used the molds too long. These days are a lot better. So we'll see how well this pack does. I mean, some casts from this age were good. Some were less good. All right. So let's do the legs now. So these are just your classic Mark IVs, and oh yes, gosh, right, there we go. Mold Slippy Roo. Not too bad. That'll need some cleaning up and details recutting and likewise on this. But, you know, overall not too bad as long as I don't drop it. Now, here we can see what separates these guys out as being the Legion variant of this kit, as opposed to the original Battle Range, and that was the addition of the molecular bonding studs onto legs and some other parts of the models. 
So that's what marks them out as being the Legion version. I mean, I like both. I don't think one is particularly superior to the other. Uh, oh yeah, super slip there. I mean, I've not seen mold slips and another one there of this sort of magnitude on any of the more recent forgeable models I bought, so over the last two years vintage. Uh, the quality has, or the consistency on the quality has improved markedly. I think that's probably because they've reduced the number of casts they do off each mold. Now here is perhaps the coolest set of legs in the entire set. And it's this guy crouching down and with shoulder mounted heavy weapons, that is a cool look to have. Yeah, awesome. Love that. Pretty decently cast as well. Now we've got some power packs. These are the distinctive Mark IV design. Pretty ubiquitous. I may actually have some plastic Mark IV backpacks I've already prepared. Hmm, so maybe I'll save these and use those ones that are already done. Or maybe I'll just use these. Hmm, have a think on that. Should probably use them so that we're doing the whole model in its original form. They look okay, actually. Yeah, happy with those. Mark IVs there. One of the things myself and Jay were discussing on the last Legion of Cheese episode was, you know, what are the models that we think we're going to get this year? Will we get a new Mark IV? Going to be interesting to see. So here we have the first set of arms. So these are the arms that hold the last cannon. Or the trigger assembly, should I say. Not too bad. Well, I mean, there's always clean up. A bit more, a bit of noticeable clean up there. That's a, a bit squiffy. Not too bad. The rims are decent. Uh, well, a little bit. If you're there. I normally reconstruct any miscast armor rims using the super glue and activator method. I'm talking of rims, we've got some here. Hello, good. Got uh, one pad with the extra armature added, and then one with studs, Mark VI style almost. Perfectly formed hemispherical studs as well, with no two part studs. So if you don't mind paying, three to three and a half, maybe four times the cost per model. You can just have single piece resin parts to do that. There's no free lunch here. So a couple of arms that have escaped. It's just the same again. Believe it or not, I've not actually built any of these before. Um, so it's gonna be an interesting experience for me. Oh, hmm. Okay, that's a bit of a, yeah. That's lost part of its rim there. So I'll probably stick this back onto the key to reconnect that rim. And has this one suffered the same fate? Yep. Ah, thank you for joining the party focus. Yeah. And that again is another problem with resin models, common issue, but recoverable on both of those. Just need some careful sticking back of once I've washed them. I'm not going to stick it back, then wash it because there's a good chance I'll get dinged off while I'm scrubbing the parts, even if I'm doing it gently. Got a couple more arms here. And these are the arms that grab onto the last cannons and are going to give this miniature set its very distinct look. Now, of course, that look has been recreated in the new plastic heavy weapon sets for a number of heavy weapons. So plasma cannons, last cannons, missile launchers. Yeah, I think it's those three that are shoulder mounted. I think the multi-melters are underslung, aren't they? But the Volkite Culverin, the auto cannon, the heavy flamer, those are all underslung weapons. Not bad. Casting's pretty decent there. Now let's do a little shuffle. So we need some laser cannon space. And then the final set of bits in this pack, aside from some flash, free flash, are the helmets. I don't think there was anything special about the helmet set that these guys came with. I think they were just standard to the set. Now, a lot of my word bearers infantry, I put Legion specific Mark IV heads on. Now I think I've used all those up. So what I'm going to do is, and this is in theme with my list, is the squads are supposed to be kind of like representing the Legion at its moment of change at Isfan 5. So I might just go with these and have unruined helmets as being like a callback to their pre-betrayal status or characteristics. Right, so that is the heavy weapon squad itself. Let us now proceed into the last cannons. Once again, the anatheme of resin portal access is with us. Obviously I'm being very careful because we don't need any blood sacrifices whatsoever. 
There we go. Right, so this is very simple kit. It's basically the last cans and a couple of accessories. So let's take a look. So these are very cool. I really like the shoulder mounted weapon designs. Are they lined up properly? Nope. Whoa, gosh, look at the slip on that. Now, here is the reality of the resinous era. It was called Mold Slip City. So, yeah, I can already see looking at this, uh, there's, it's going to take hours of work to clean up and remove all those mold slips. So, yes, look good. It would have been nice not to have the mold slips, but that's resin models for you. This, however, this one here is much better. It's a cool design, isn't it, the last cannon? A very similar design has been used on the new last cannon. It's just slightly adapted, but obviously not quite such sharp edge design as these ones. Another slip there. That one's okay. So yeah, three out of five of those are quite slick. So a lot of cleanup work to do there. I mean, one thing I have found with working on the new plastic miniatures is it's just so much quicker to build than the resin ones. So, so, so much quicker. And then in the accessory parts, you get the power packs for the last cannons, which are going to fit into that notch. And then finally, you get a little scanner, which um, I guess is supposed to be is that like an augury scanner for the squad leader. That's a nice little uh, accessory as well. Very good. And there you have it, a little trip down memory lane there and a look at some models of the early heresy era. I think in years to come, these will be quite a niche thing because they, relatively speaking, probably didn't sell that many of these. And now the plastic ones are around. They'll probably outnumber the examples of this maybe by 10 to 1, even now. And as time goes on, these will just become more and more niche artifacts. But nonetheless, they are cool models, classic Space Marine, heresy designs, a lot to like here, even if we've got the inherent jankiness of resin. Anyway, so I hope you've enjoyed this retroactive, it's not quite a retro hammer review, I don't think it's old enough for retro hammer, it's definitely an out of production hammer view. Hope you've enjoyed it. As always, please do share your thoughts and observations in the comment section. Be interested to hear those. In particular, do you have any of these packs tucked away? in your stashes. I know I've got more yet. What are your thoughts of these compared to the new range if you bought both? If you've come into the Heresy with the new range, what do you think of these looking back on where it came from compared to the modern and well-designed plastic models that you'll be familiar with? Please do share those thoughts as always. But other than that, I'd just like to say thank you very much for watching. I'll speak to you next time and goodbye.